Hey, good Wednesday morning, everybody. This is First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich. Wanted to do an update on our system off the southeast coast. It's not tropical yet. It's not even subtropical, but it has the potential in the next 24 to 48 hours to become a low, some kind of subtropical or tropical low, and it could transition eventually into a tropical system. It really doesn't matter what it gets named, whether it's tropical, subtropical, becomes Ana, it really doesn't matter. What you need to focus on is the impacts, and we'll talk about what those are going to be over the next couple of days. Here's a quick loop that you could see the system. Uh, it's a very broad area of showers and thunderstorms, kind of loosely organized right now. Um, it's not organized. I mean, when you look at this thing, it's it's all over the place. Just because there's a lot, just because there's a lot of showers and thunderstorms doesn't mean the system is really organized. It just means there's a lot of a lot of mess down there. So I'm going to pause this real quick and kind of show you what's going on. The, the circulation, if there is some kind of low, which is basically uh, to me it looks like an elongated trough, it's right here off the coast. Even though you got this huge explosion of thunderstorms off the Carolina coast. Now I'm going to turn the radar off for a second. I'm going to switch to the infrared satellite image because this is going to show you these cloud tops a little bit better and you can see this down here is where our low is possibly trying to form even though you got a whole bunch of thunderstorms out here which is something to watch because even if the low should form here the energy might transition out to the east a little bit more over time quick look at the water vapor loop shows there is some dry air getting entrained on the western side so most of this energy looks like it's going to be lopsided it's going to be off to the east of the system um, for probably the next uh, I would say 24 to the, the 36 hours at least now from a path standpoint where is it gonna go well it really can't go too far to the east right now there's a there's a ridge of high pressure here um, that's blocking it from going anywhere there's a trough digging down over the middle of the country so the biggest avenue is somewhere in here but these are these are very weak steering currents so the system is not going to be in a hurry to go anywhere the thing that's interesting is just how um, how how cool the waters are for this time of year even though you have the Gulf Stream there water temperatures aren't exactly what I would call super warm you can see the narrow ribbon of warm water associated with the Gulf Stream if it hugs that narrow area then it will have plenty of energy to gain strength as a tropical system now if it stays a little farther east or west it still could become a subtropical low kind of like a glorified nor'easter um, but it would still have the same impacts. You're talking high surf, wind, and really this is going to be about rain. And the wider view of the, of the water vapor loop shows that trough digging into the central and western U.S. You can see the ridge out to the east, and anytime you want to see where a tropical system is going to go, kind of look where, it out, where its outflow is going. And you can see these outflow, this high-level cirrus clouds trying to stream to the north. That's, a, that's an indication that the storm is trying to get pulled off in that general direction. Uh, let's look at some of the model data. We finally have model data on this now that it's been um, designated as um, AL90, Invest AL90. Pretty consistent considering the hurricane hunters haven't been out there yet. If you look at the clustering right in this general area, there's a, there's a little cluster where it loops back towards the Carolina coast and then it curves out in this general direction. There's still a couple outliers out here, but notice the western side is pretty flat here. So um, really honestly for this early on in the process, this is pretty good indication. Um, you got an idea where it's going to go, but this really keeps both the North and South Carolina coast in play. And this is a five day track in many locations. So you could see this thing is going to be around for a while. So the potential is there. It could really soak the Carolina coast. As far as intensity is concerned, um, you look at all the model runs here. None of the models has has this thing becoming more than a minimal tropical storm. Um, even if you look at the highest model here, the ships, which is a climatology model, 63.3 miles per hour. So not really super strong, but that's at the high end. Uh, if, you, if you look at the consensus here, it seems to be right around 40 to 50 miles an hour right in this general range peaking. And a lot of them staying below that. Remember, it just has to get to to 39 miles an hour higher to become a subtropical or tropical storm. Um, this is the GFS suite, which is the ensemble. They're even weaker. There's a couple of the members which are higher up, close to 60. But if you focus on the consensus or what we like to call the ensemble mean, it's kind of right there in that 30 to 40 uh, mile per hour range. The bigger story with all of this to me is going to be the rainfall that this ends up producing because you can see this big cluster of showers and storms on the north and northeast side up and down the coast we're likely going to see heavy downpours starting tomorrow lasting into thursday or friday excuse me saturday possibly sunday possibly even into monday
So rain is likely going to be a big issue. So when you start looking at some of the HPC products showing the rainfall, you can see a uh, six to seven inch rainfall, and this is just through Monday. Now, if this thing should sneak in further inland, then those heavy rains are going to move inland. But for the Charlotte area right now, I don't think we're going to see a huge impact except for maybe an increase in humidity and some scattered showers. So we'll keep an eye on it. The Hurricane Hunter trip out there today has been canceled, mainly because it's so close to shore and there's really no need to fly out there today. But um, if we zoom in real closely here, um, you can actually see it looks like a circulation center trying to form down in this area. Um, I'll let this loop a couple times. It looks like a little swirl has formed down here. So it'll be interesting to see if this is where the low ends up forming closer to the coast. So we'll keep an eye on it throughout the afternoon. If you have plans at the beach, I would not, I would not change them uh, unless it's just a Friday, Saturday trip. Um, I would definitely pay attention to the weather. I would count on there being rain at least some of the time you're out there, but it really depends on the track. In this situation, because the storm is so lopsided, if you're going to like Charleston South and the storm tracks to the north, you can end up getting pretty decent weather this weekend. If you're going north of the track or east of the track, up here in the Carolina beaches, North Carolina beaches, I think the threat of a, of a washout is much higher than, let's say, down in South Carolina right now. But please pay attention to the weather. Count on wet weather. Don't count on a big hurricane or tropical storm. Just count on it being a very soggy weekend and probably not a great weekend to be in the ocean due to rip currents. Of course, I'll be tracking this throughout the afternoon and have complete updates starting today at 4, 5, and 6 on NBC Charlotte. I'll see you then.